www.solverde.pt São muitos anos. Agora com uma nova identidade, o time que conhecemos como Sauer e que foi Alfa Romeo nos últimos anos chama-se agora Stake. Outra das alterações, bem mais importante do que o nome, é a presença de James Key como diretor técnico da equipa suíça. Estamos aqui com ele para saber o que mudou desde que ele saiu da Sauer há quase 12 anos e o que são as perspectivas da equipa para esta temporada. James, uh, in a way, welcome back to, uh, to a place you know well. Uh, How different is it, the team, from what, the time you were with Zauer? And how much, unfortunately, is still more or less the same and Audi needs to invest in which areas to bring it up to the level of the teams you were working with before? Yeah, so, I mean, uh, first, I mean, I was there 12 years ago, of course, um, uh, for a couple of years. And um, uh, I'm delighted to be back, actually. It does feel very familiar still. Um, Of course, many things have changed. There's a lot more people involved now. So even though Saab is a small team, it's still 600 or so people, which is a big company. So uh, there's that to get used to, but many familiar faces as well. Um, yeah, that there are things which are definitely different, but, but things which are, are very familiar and haven't moved much. So, of course, there's some work to do uh, to uh, invest, as you say, and, and improve the infrastructure and the manpower levels and so on. But I think the foundation is very, very solid. It's a great team. It's a lot of experience there, as well as a lot of young talent as well. Um, and it's a great place. It's a great starting point. I don't think that anything needs to be changed on the starting point. It's really building on what we've got. Hardware, software, personnel, in which areas do you think an investment is, is urgent? Um, uh, well, it's a dangerous question to ask an engineer because obviously we'll take as much as we can get, but uh, what we do is expensive. Um, but, but I think I think there's some. If you take software, for example, uh, uh, and, and it's, it's typical across the team. If you if you take this as, a, as the example to use, but the new tools we have are outstanding. I think the software group we have is excellent, and the quality and the functionality of the, the software tools we write in house are very strong. Um, the issue, I guess, we have is that we have a long list, and you know you've got a you've got a personnel. Um, restriction there, I suppose, and the number of people that we can bring into that group to work on it. So in that respect, it's manpower. But it also means that some some software tools are very old-fashioned. In fact, some are what we were using when I was at Starbucks before, which is quite some time ago, so they need replacing. So it's a real mix of things, really. Um, I think the current ownership has done a brilliant job of, of, of allowing the team not just to sort of continue, but also grow. Uh, and uh, there's been investment there as well. So we're not miles and miles behind by any stretch but to go to to go to the front which is where we want to be of course there's a huge amount of legacy investment that teams have done who are there now even before the cost cap in particular uh, where we've got a bit of catching up to do so i would say a bit in all areas to be honest with you but the things we can do in any way are at a very high standard uh, james you obviously arrive here beginning of september the baseline for this car had already been decided by the previous technical director and the rest of the team. What have you found? What surprised you in a positive way and in which areas were you still able to make, make them make some changes uh, to go in the direction you believe is the right one for this, the current generation of cars? So I think, um, I think the team have made some brave decisions with some of the directions. You know, the, the pull rod on the front suspension was a, a good example of that. You know, it's something I'm familiar with in this generation of cars but it's a difficult project to do, um, but, but absolutely the right one. It's very much an aerodynamic reason you do that, certainly not a mechanical one. Um, so that was good. The platform that I kind of, I saw when I turned up, I was, I was impressed by, you know, there was some really, really good work on, on packaging the car, on making it very tidy, on leaving lots of scope and possibilities for aero surfaces and so on. So that was a big positive for me. The process, the, the, the way the Sabre works, I'm of course familiar with. You know, it's exactly the same as it was years ago in terms of how you develop the architecture of a car. Um, and, and that process, I think, is very strong. And uh, I saw definite evidence of that when I arrived. In terms of things, things to do, I mean, there's definitely a few things missing off the car, in my view, that we're looking at now in design and I hope to introduce later in the year. Um, there were certain areas where... I thought we'd done a decent job, but there's more to come from them. So where I could, I influenced them. But of course, time was a bit tight for some of it. I think the biggest thing really was, was 
setting out what what the nature of our performance should be you know with colleagues in the vehicle performance group in the area department of course in design and, and even beyond technical as well in terms of the operational side of the team and how we need to try and push our developments through the system um, and we made some real progress there so you know, I've been with the team for the majority of the aero development work. I think that's been really strong. Actually, the guys have done a great job. I'm sure many teams have done a similar job because it's very, very close competition, of course. But I think in particular, that's been, that's been a real highlight for me. Um, and it was nice to be able to influence a little bit on that and also set some really tough targets as well for the team. And the team have responded brilliantly. Obviously, you, ha you have seen the, program, the progress in the simulations. You have seen the progress in the, in the wind tunnel, but there's nothing like track time and the stopwatch to tell you exactly where you are. As the track results matched uh, what was uh, the simulation, the expectations of the team, and which areas of the car do you think you have to prioritize in terms of development in the early part of the season? So I, 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 there's, two ty there's two types of expectation, I guess. One, one, is, one is your pace, which honestly in this test, I don't think anyone's really got any idea where they, where they are. The We've been pretty conservative in our approach. We've just been ticking the boxes as we've gone. We had a long test list. We needed to make sure that we, we worked through that to be able to sort of maximize our performance and potential going into the season next weekend. Um, so, so really, you know, we, we haven't gone for, for, for big, um, big numbers with our, with our lap times particularly. We've just done the hard work that's behind getting well prepared. Others have done something similar. Others maybe have been a bit more racy. Others have been concentrating on race performance. So I, I think in terms of the pecking order, although Red Bull looks strong and the, you know that sort of thing you'd expect, for, for, the, for the rest of us, I think it's quite difficult to tell at the moment. It'll be really, really interesting to see where things go next weekend in uh, the first race. Um, in terms of the priorities on, um, let's say in terms of expectations on the way the cars behaved, it's actually been pretty close to what we hoped for, which has been really positive. The simulator work seems to have been really accurate. So... We're happy with that. There's always, of course, tuning that into the reality of a real track with real tyres and all the ambient conditions you have, but no big surprises. Um, but there's for sure development work to still do, I think. You know, we've got to balance the car a little bit more uh, between corner speeds. We've got a bit more work to do on through corner balances as well, which is aerodynamic as well as mechanical. Um, I think there's some, some mechanical grip work to do at the rear axle. Uh, and so on. So I, 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 think, I think normal headlines, I, I suppose, at this time of year when you're beginning to learn a car or where you'd like to, uh, to address things, no big, no big hitters or big surprises, but sort of logical steps. And already we're talking about what they should be in, uh, in the coming races. One final thing. Uh, yesterday, talking to us, Valtteri targeted that the team should be at the level it was at the beginning of 2022, which was a pretty positive start. Is he being a bit optimistic, a bit too demanding, or do you think that's, that's feasible in terms of results? Uh, I don't think he's being too demanding at all. I, I think he's, he's saying absolutely the right thing, and uh, that's exactly what the way we need to be thinking as well. I said this to the team. You know, there's no reason why we can't fight well above the P9 we were last year. We're not ready to attack at the front, of course, yet, but um, I, I think in terms of that very, very tight midfield, you know, that we saw last year, there's every opportunity there, you know, but there's an opportunity for every team. So you've got to out, out develop everyone if you can, but there's every opportunity for us. So there's no harm in ambition, you know, no harm in ambitious targets. So I can't see why we shouldn't um, intend to be at that sort of level. Um, so I, I don't think I don't think it's being too ambitious at all. And uh, like I say, we'll find out next week exactly where we are. Thank you very much, Jim. Thank you for your time. E uh, tivemos assim as impressões de James Key, o diretor técnico da Stake Sauber, a uh, uh, corroborar o optimismo de Walter e Bottas, que quer voltar ao nível que a equipa teve no início de 2022, a dizer também que há muito trabalho para a frente, a dizer que reencontrou em Inville muita da estrutura que ainda deixou quando saiu há 12 anos, mas que também que a equipa evoluiu bastante e que está bastante impressionado com o trabalho que já encontrou quando chegou em setembro do ano passado e este carro já estava francamente desenvolvido, apesar de ter, saído, ter sido ainda possível aqui e aos seus colaboradores fazerem algumas alterações para melhorar, sobretudo, o pacote aerodinâmico deste C44. Salverde.pt São muitos anos.